blogger named Susan Cram, who's a, uh, a pretty popular IT leadership writer. And she talks about the, the IT annual report. Some organizations, I know Intel has a very famous one that's used as examples uh, at many conferences and so on. This idea that you can build a report that articulates IT's value, all the things IT's done, budgets and projects and innovations and everything. And uh, in this article, uh, the writer talks about uh, sort of her perspective on how business people receive an annual report from IT. If, they're, if the business person is already engaged with IT, they don't need it because they're already bought in and they're engaged and they know what's going on. If they're not bought in, they don't care and they're not going to read it. It's an interesting perspective. So what I suggest here is instead of thinking about a more of a passive reporting kind of model, do some of this, do some visibility work in a more active, engaged way. So there are four ideas here. One is total cost of ownership analysis, which I believe can help to demonstrate to the business that you're serious about the business, not about just IT. Uh, innovation workshops as a way to provide leadership in engaging the business in innovative uh, discussions, not so much about the specific technologies, but about taking a leadership role in bringing innovative ideas and innovation discussions to the organization. Uh, the third is executive dashboards. Um, one of the uh, articles in this handout, or a couple of them, talk about dashboards, but uh, I'll give you an example of that shortly. Um, and then project demos. I'll tell you a little story about that here in a second. But these are all ways that I've seen provide uh, really good visibility into IT's value to the business constituents in a very tangible way. One that really, you can really get some engagement around. A um, couple stories for you here. One, um, one of our clients in a uh, investment banking field had a business uh, user come to them and tell them about their frustration in not being able to know when customer accounts were available uh, for servicing during the business day because of all the transaction volumes being very being variable um, there was a, a concern that they would never know exactly when the accounts would be updated posted uh, reconciled and so on and that really provided some some headaches for the business so uh, working together with uh, the CIO and their uh, chief information architect they came up with this idea of, of a dashboard that they could show the key systems and their status, processing status, throughout the, throughout the night, which turned out to be a, a long batch cycle. I think the interesting thing about this is not, not that prelude, because that's kind of boring, but the interesting thing is that they delivered this report on a BlackBerry. And um, I think the most important thing here is that whatever kind of communication you come up with, it's produced in a way that can be consumed by the people you're trying to reach. It doesn't make a lot of sense to build a fancy Web 2.0 graphical drill down web-based tool if your users are never at their desks. And so this is an example of actually going out and reaching the, the customer. So that, that went a long way. Um, short story about project demonstrations. Uh, I was working with an insurance company who was re-platforming and refacing their agent technologies. An insurance company who sells property and casualty insurance and depends on an independent agent workforce. There's a lot of competition for the agent desktop. They weren't captive uh, agents, they were independent agents, so they could pick and choose the carriers that they worked with and the insurance uh, brokers. So uh, because this project was not only refacing the agent technology, but also uh, several of the underlying systems that process policies and underwriting, they were, the executives of the organization probably never took on a, a program this big. It was a, a $100 million plus program. So they were very uh, interested in being hands-on with the program. So we tried to figure out a way to really engage this group. 
And uh, after some boring PowerPoint uh, meetings, we decided we had to take a different tack. So what we started doing is sharing with them some of the design thinking around this new agent system. We first shared some use case designs with them, some user interface designs, and some business-oriented prototypes, which culminated in a video that showed them a day in the life of, a, of an agent before and after. And this really captivated the, uh, the executive team to the point where they asked us to present the same to their board. And I know you're going to talk about uh, engaging the C-level and the board in Homie's discussion tomorrow. And so I think uh, there'll be some really interesting conversations when you start to bring some of the business-oriented uh, demos of some of the things you're working on to your business constituents. I think the flip side of that is you have to make sure that they're not technology prototypes or technology demos. Uh, I heard a story a couple weeks ago about one of our clients who brought a technology prototype to their leadership team and they were showing counters of transactions going through a message bus. Um, not a terribly exciting demo for, for your business community. Okay, second, uh, second uh, priority here is around increasing the focus that you put on innovation. Um, I think one of the uh, challenges in uh, tackling the innovation topic is not viewing it as a single project or a single event or processing ideas as they come in in a queue. You have to actually think about it as a life cycle because as new technologies come in and new ideas are deemed innovative, you have to then think about, okay, how am I going to get this idea into the organization? How am I going to transition it into sort of the operation, the way the, the business will work day in and day out? Then you have to keep your eye on those technologies that have been around for a while to make sure that they're not end of life and require transitioning out of the organization. Uh, I worked with a, uh, a retailer who we, uh, of the order that we call Big Box, 200,000 square feet, their stores are huge. And uh, they, their systems were basically two, two types of systems. They had the systems that sat at the cash register and systems that sat in the office that processed all the transactions and, and all that kind of thing, billing and payroll and things like that. And that back office system in the stores was based on a, a, an aging uh, computer platform that the retailer was told by the vendor that they were going to discontinue support for it within a year. And they had uh, uh, hundreds of stores with this platform in it. And uh, they asked, okay, so what third parties are out there who can service this platform for us? And the vendor kind of chuckled and said, well, you're the ones that have the most skills in this platform. So maybe you can open up shop to support all the other people who have it. So this is kind of just a sort of a sad story uh, about why you need to have this life cycle view when you think about innovation. It's not just about picking out the next cool technology or the next technology that might help solve a specific problem. It's thinking about it more in a systematic way. And this picture over here is just a, a, a portfolio view of technologies through their horizon. Okay, um, I'll give you one example here around um, a financial services company that, that we worked with who wanted help uh, thinking about building their innovation function. They really didn't have anything explicit. We had just finished some enterprise design work that uh, sort of yielded a, a, a high level list of business capabilities in a priority sense that they wanted to go add to their systems and architectures. Uh, but they, they really didn't know what to do. They had one person that they thought they would move into this innovation function, one full-time person, and they wanted to know, okay, how can we make do with this one person and you know, make some progress? So we sort of, uh, had a few brainstorming uh, and some innovation discussions about the innovation function. Uh, and we came up with a couple of ideas. One idea was to leverage the vendors. If you think about your top two or three vendors, they all have innovation
capabilities, research centers, and so on. So we said, okay, why don't you take a couple of your time